John Janch is a marketing consultant, speaker, and author of Duct Tape Marketing, The Referral Engine, and The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur. He's also the founder of the Duct Tape Marketing Consultant Network, which trains and licenses independent consultants and agencies to use the duct tape methodology. He's a trusted small business marketing expert and authority who has just released a new book, The Ultimate Marketing Engine, Five Steps to Ridiculously Consistent Growth. So for this small business matter on growth and marketing, we invited him to share his insights. John, welcome to the Small Business Matters podcast. Well, thanks for having me, Gary. Well, your latest book, The Ultimate Marketing Machine, opens with a text message from Charlie, and he's one of your clients asking advice on an email he's about to send to his team of 50 employees and his customers in response to statewide shelter in place orders, informing them that all active projects would be put on hold. And so many businesses would fail in the following year, but not this one. Why was Charlie's business so resilient? Yeah, so that, that email that you're talking about also went to his 50 plus employees as, as well as uh, all of his clients. And you know, many, many businesses around the world sent a very similar <laughs> email that basically said, you know, don't come in on Monday, nobody's showing up a new job site on Monday, we gotta figure this out. Uh, I actually saw many of the responses uh, that, that came back from that email. And I was really struck by how many of them said something like, you're doing the right thing. Don't worry, we're going to be with you. In fact, we want you to be here. We want you to, to survive this. And one gentleman even offered to pay in advance for a, a kitchen remodel that wasn't going to be done probably for, for months. And I think it's shown a very bright light on something Frankly, this fundamentally always been true, but I, I think in good times, a lot of times, businesses thrive many times by just being in the right place at the right time. Market demand, you know, carries them. But in tough times, quite often, businesses thrive by being meaningful in the lives of their customers and their their team, their employees. And I think that that's what we really saw during the last couple of years, or at least that idea was really tested in the last couple of years. It's those businesses that were already very close to their customers, I think came through this uh, in, in somewhat shining fashion. Yeah, because he, he didn't have any projects canceled. It's, it's really quite remarkable and probably a, a testament to uh, the business. And I'm not sure how long Charlie has been in business, but obviously he's been doing the right things there in terms of having that relationship with his customers. Do you like agree? a lot of... Yeah, like a lot of local businesses, uh, Charlie is actually the second generation uh, owner of, of uh, this remodeling uh, business. His father started it, I think, in about 1980. So uh, that, that's a testament probably to, to what, uh, what they do and what they mean to their customers right there. Stop spamming people and taking your customers for granted. That, that really became quite common at the onset of the, the pandemic. Do you think that small businesses and marketers in particular have learned from this? and Or do you think that things are gonna go back to the way they were before the pandemic? Well, people are people and they will definitely go back to the way they, they were during the pandemic. I think our, our memories are uh, somewhat short. And just to put a little context on that, that was my cynical way of saying that that's the advice people were giving, You know, how to market in a time of pandemic was, was essentially stop spamming people. And, and uh, stop taking your uh, customers for granted. I just kind of chuckled. I was writing this book and I'd already really come to that conclusion that, that you know, we have to actually focus on our customer's success. We have to get closer to our customers. And, and so I always thought it was, I just thought it was almost humorous that, that people were giving that advice. And it was like, when has that ever not been a good idea? So uh, to, to your, again, maybe I'm sounding a little cynical to your, to your final point there. We definitely are in a period where I think a lot of people have learned, but you know, one of the things that, that we certainly know is that the next decade, the next generation, whatever it is, you know, the, they'll think everything's new again. And, and really we, you know, all of what we're doing in marketing fundamentally hasn't changed. You know, mm. our job of getting somebody to trust us enough to, uh, to, you know, part with their money for some promise of a service or, or, uh, some other deliverable. I mean, that's always been the job. And, and so, you know, I think a lot of times because the, uh, the digital world made so seeming uh, platform changes so rapidly, I think we've forgotten that that's always been the job and always will be. Mm -hmm. So what was your biggest self-realization as you were writing and finishing this book? 
Sure. So I create something in this book called the customer success track, which is is really something that I've developed over 20 plus years of me working with business owners. Uh, and the idea behind that is that we started to realize that most of our customers, the ones we could help immediately, were in a kind of a certain stage in their business. They had the same challenges, the same characteristics. I mean, we could recognize them. And we started to learn that if we fix those challenges, we could take them to the next stage because they would always come to us and say, oh, we need more customers. Well, we need to fix a few things before we're going to be able to do that. And then we can start generating leads that are the right leads. And then we can actually start converting more of those leads. So we realized that there were these stages that if we were going to work with a customer for life or for a long time, we had to, we had to help them evolve and mature through those stages. And each of those stages, you know, over time, we were able to develop a, a list of milestones. You know, here's what we have to do in order to get them to go to the next stage. And so that idea of a customer success track um, is something that I unpack thoroughly in the book for anybody that, that reads the book and is a marketer or wants to do marketing in their business. I, I think I've got the whole roadmap for you. Um, however, the biggest realization is that I think this is an approach that any business can take. This idea of making their customers successful, this idea of viewing their customers as you know, where they are today, but where they want to go is really what you sell or really the mission of the business, I think will change a, a great deal of how you view your business, how you view your products and services, certainly your people, your training, your sales messaging. Uh, so I think that that, you know, that idea of being able to take this customer success track into any business and show them how to use it as a way for them to to basically build a strategic framework around their whole business is is something that I'm on a bit of a mission to do. Yeah, and in in the book you say that the typical customer journey funnel and pushing customers right. toward a sale may be wrong or limiting. What? Why do you think? Well, I, I think a lot of people when they think about the funnel, it's you know get some people up here to know who you are and and then squeeze some small part of them out and voila, they become customers. And there's really nothing inherently wrong with that. We do have to get somebody in the market to know we exist and a smaller number yet to know that, that they're an ideal fit for our business. But for so many marketers, that's where it stops. And, and I believe that that's where the real opportunity to, to truly scale a business begins by keeping those, by creating such a great experience at the point at which somebody buys or really even at the point at which they try <laughs> your business, but certainly at the point at which they buy from your business, we all know that it's far easier to do more business, repeat business with people who we've already established trust with than it is to go out there and find new people to convince, to trust us. And then of course, uh, people I think are wired to make referrals. And so um, quite often though, the, the, they happen for many businesses as a happy accident. Um, and so, you know, my idea of the customer journey is that it's an end to end uh, thinking. It's an end to end framework that certainly starts with getting people to know who we are. But it really the, the ultimate goal is that that 100 percent of those people who become customers of ours are also so thrilled that they want to tend to tell their friends, neighbors and colleagues. You talk about um, uh, in marketing and, and, and refining messages to invoke um trust and getting your customers yeah. to trust you. Can you give me some examples of that and how, how, how that's applied? Well, you know, the most practical way in many cases, because, you know, with all the talk about the changes in marketing, what's really changed is the way people buy. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that, you know, even if somebody says, if you, even if you came to me and said, oh, you've got to, you've got to go here, you've got to check out this business. They're awesome. You know, if you've got this problem, they can solve it. You know, there was a time when I'd say, yeah, what's their phone number? You know, uh, let, me, let me call them up. And that was the end of the story. We'd start uh, a conversation <laughs> about me becoming a customer. Well, today, I'm going to turn to a search engine <laughs> and I'm going to say, well, before I spend my time on the phone with anyone, let's see what their website looks like. Do other people trust them? Are there logos or banners or has their content appeared in publications that I recognize? Do they work with other businesses? Can they prove that? Uh, they've got results for other businesses like me. Let's look at their reviews. Do they have uh, plenty of reviews and are they good reviews? I mean, those that's that's the process I think that we're gonna go through and we may not say, is this a business I can trust? But that's certainly what we're doing uh, yeah. as we're doing our initial research. And 
we're all busy today. We don't want to be bombarded with emails and phone calls and salespeople trying to get us to do things until we're really ready to get serious about checking a business out. And so we have to, I think, make a stage, an intentional stage of building or at least demonstrating that we are trustworthy to those people that are out there doing their initial research. Yeah. So, so really making it easy for customers to give feedback, encouraging them to give sure. feedback. I mean, we've seen how Amazon's kind of worked that all into the, the yeah, workflow yeah. with you buy yeah, anything. Yeah. Now you get asked to rate right. it. And, right. Um, but it's, I've seen some really good examples, even my dentist, gosh, my dentist is, um, all over the, the check-ins on Yelp. Yeah. And if you do this, yeah. we give you a, a Starbucks coffee or something. Yeah. Just thinking creatively about how you can get people in that loop, right? Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't get people to review. I don't care if you give them a twenty five dollars Starbucks card. If it was a bad experience, <laughs> they're probably yeah, still not going to yeah. review you, right? So if you what, but but what's a shame is all those businesses out there that have raving fans for customers who don't ever tell people about them. That because you know, let's face it, we're all busy. It's inconvenient maybe to go to one of these websites if you're not familiar with using them all the time. So the easier we can make it for people to do something that they're actually predisposed to do anyway, the more it's going to happen. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, but back to trust, uh, um, I wanted to mention, I was reading the Edelman Trust Barometer mm -hmm. just before this yeah. interview, and I, I was surprised to learn that business is once again the most trusted at 61%. That's ahead of NGOs at 59%, yeah. government, government at 52%, and the media down there at 50%. But 77% of respondents said that they trust their employer, making yeah. the relationship between employer and employee incredibly important. What cues should small business owners take from this and the importance of establishing and maintaining trust? Yeah, I, I think a couple of things are going on. Uh, you know, businesses have not always been <laughs> this high. This is, I think, a somewhat uh, recent trend. And I think it's probably very related to what we've all gone through the last couple of years. I mean, we all saw businesses that by no fault of their own necessarily, that were the, the little corner pub that we loved that, that just really got, you know, hammered with, with, you know, trying to react to this and respond to this. And so I think there was a lot of empathy, um, that, that probably raises that, that number up a little bit, but in terms of <clears throat> employee trust, I mean, the thing that's going on again, you and I are recording this in April of 2022, but there is a real shortage of, of, you know, people that want to go to work in a lot of businesses right now. A lot of organizations, um, Charlie's business that you mentioned, Schlegel, um, it, it, you know, their biggest challenge right now is not getting work. People want all of the, everybody wants their home remodel right now. <laughs> their, their biggest challenge is finding people to do that work. And so the, the idea of just running ads on Monster or whatever, you know, job boards is just not working. Um, and so, you know, the, the fact that people are looking at and need to look at uh, the, this, you know, we talk about the customer journey. Well, the hiring or the recruitment journey has to be this end to end journey as well. That, that certainly begins with demonstrating to the world what a great company yours is to work at. Uh, certainly when people become a, um, a, an employee of that company, having a great onboarding experience, just like you would with a customer, having uh, great feedback and great engagement, just like you would want with a customer, having them trust the process so that they're willing to refer. I mean, the, the framework of the marketing hourglass that I use for our customer journey fits just absolutely <laughs> Uh, the same way as the the employee and recruitment journey too. So, you know, a lot of times it, it's we treat we treat it like a vending machine. Oh, I need more customers, run some ads, or you know, I need more employees, so run some ads. And it really, uh, you really have to think in terms <clears throat> of building uh, a brand around working at your business, and and certainly about creating a an end to end journey that that every step along the process, somebody feels like, yeah, this is I, I made the right decision. This is the place for me. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm an Apple customer. I have been for a while. I consider myself more of a member of a club. Uh, yeah. Is this the kind of thing that you're referring to when you speak of customers as members? Yeah, I, I mean, Apple's a Apple's a great one to to use because so many people um, are familiar with it. I'm a Mac user on you know all of my products, but very few people are Apple. <laughs> so sometimes that example is is a little tough for people to wrap their their heads around. 
when I talk about customers as members, it's really just a point of view shift. Again, what if we started thinking, what's the transformation <laughs> that we can create or that they're after uh, in their life or in their, their business or in, in, in the situation that they're in? I think we might start viewing you know, less transactional. We might start saying, okay, what else could we do? Or uh, you know, what else could we add? Or how could we make this a better uh, experience? Because to, to your point of using Apple, I mean, I think a lot of people feel like they're joining something. They're not just a customer. <laughs> they, they've joined something. A they've movement. invested. Yeah, they've invested in, in something that they, that they believe in. Uh, I, you know, I think that was probably more true 20 years ago even than it is today. But there's no question that people who use, you know, Apple products are generally speaking very dedicated to using Apple products. But I think, I think any business can set themselves up uh, with that point of view that, that you're, you're almost, you know, imagine if somebody was joining your business rather than just being a customer, they were investing in themselves mm -hmm. as much as in your business, you know, by becoming a customer. As I said, I think using this customer success track idea to make that tangible and practical is a way that you can start viewing that, but it, it does definitely start with the shift in, in point of view. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned jo uh, Joey Coleman's book, um, yeah. Never Lose a Customer. And I think the example that I um, read about was the Zo Zogix um, towel company. They, they do gym towels, uh, d disinfectant towels, industrial type of product. And the personal video that you would get if when, when you're on board as a new customer and in that period of in the first hundred days and how transformative yeah. that can be over the lifetime of that relationship. Yeah, and that's, again, since we're bringing it up, that's true both of customers and employees. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of research out there that suggests if, if you're going to lose an employee, you're going to lose them in the first 90 days because the onboarding experience was was so non-existent, uh, maybe. So uh, absolutely, uh, if you can... If you can really wow somebody in that first 90 days, as Joey really, I think Joey actually says 100 days, um, but uh, uh, you know, he talks about it in that in that book, they, they're much more likely to stay with you maybe for years. So is there anything that, that you wanted to add that, that I haven't covered in, in the interview so far, John? Um, you know, the, the, we've been talking a little bit about this idea of the customer journey and uh, our customer journey is actually something we call the marketing hourglass. It's a framework that has seven stages, no like trust, try by repeat and refer. And I really feel like those are behaviors. I chose those words intentionally because I think that's, I think that's what we all want to do <laughs> with the businesses that we do business with. Obviously, if we have a problem, we need to know who can solve it. Then we're going to check them out. Snap decision. Do I like it? Don't like it. I mean, we might be gone if the website doesn't load quickly. I'm looking for trust signals there. Um, is there a way for me to try that business? And, and trust me, calling them up on the phone is a try. It's not just a 30 day software yeah. trial. I want the buying experience to, to just stay just as high. And if everything works out, I love the convenience of just being able to go back and repeat. Um, and anybody that exceeds my expectations these days, uh, maybe the bar is pretty low, but, but uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to be out there talking about giving a review, you know, sharing on social media like we all do today. So I think those are behaviors that we want to as buyers to go through. And I, I think our job as businesses is just to understand how could we be guides uh, through through each of those stages? And and I think that that's, that framework could could really be uh, the essence of your marketing rather than worrying about, do I have to be on every platform? You know, worry more about uh, onboarding a new customer if you don't have a, an elegant process for that. The book is The Ultimate Marketing Engine, Five Steps to Ridiculously Consistent Growth. John Janch, thank you so much for coming on the Small Business Matters podcast and sharing your ideas with us. Where can our audience go to find out more information? Sure. So uh, there is a website for the book, theultimatemarketingengine.com, just like the title of the book. And you can find some free chapters there. You can also find uh, there's, there's actually a free course there that you can get a little few videos of me talking about some of the ideas. If you want to just check out the work I've been doing for the last few decades, uh, it's all at duct tape marketing.com and that's d-u-c-t-t-a-p-e marketing.com awesome thank you so much john